This video is picking up right where I left off in the previous video. I'm still in part 035, user defined functions, and we're moving on to the section marked supplemental material right here. Now the following was inspired by a student asked question, but I think it just makes a really good example of a larger function that is more realistic because there's a little bit more code inside of it. And the question was, so we can use the max function, the built-in max function, to find the maximum values in a matrix and also in what row they are located. But what if we want a function that's going to take a matrix and it's going to return the row and column of the overall maximum in that matrix? How would we write such a function? Now here's my first example matrix right here. Largest value is first row, third column. And I run, I've already written the function, but I run it here and I get two results into two different variables, row and column, and display that out. And then I've got some more examples that follow, but let me run this section and just see it. All right, so here's example one. There's our maximum, row one, column three. And you can run the code or just go through and see that all the rest of these uh, work perfectly. So it seems like the function is written correctly. Let's go check out its code. All right, so here's the function right here. It doesn't entirely fit on the page, but I have the word function in square brackets. The two results that will be returned, row index and column index is what I've named those variables, equals the name of the function itself, and it's one input, which is a matrix, so I've simply named the variable m. Now there's a variety of ways to solve this, and this way is not necessarily the best. But what I'm doing here is I'm gonna use the size function to get uh, the number of rows, total number of rows. And I'm actually gonna use this little tilde here just to say, eh, ignore the other result of size, ignore the total number of columns, I don't need to know it. And then I'm using the tilde again right here to say from the max function for the overall maximum, changing that matrix to a column vector, getting the overall maximum from the matrix, I only wanna know the index. I don't want to know what the value of the maximum is because the function's not actually finding that information. So I just again use the tilde to just say, eh, I'm not interested in that result. You could have just filled in a dummy variable. That's essentially what this is. It's just a placeholder for saying, I don't need this information. And then basically I'm doing some arithmetic to figure out what the row index and column index are. I'm using the REM or remainder function to get the remainder after I divide index by row count, and that'll give me my row index. And then if it's zero, I need to make a slight adjustment and actually set it equal to the row count, the final row of the matrix. And then I can calculate the column index as the ceiling of index divided by row count. Now I think probably this other solution here, and all of these are uh, included in the um, links in the video description, you can access all these files. I actually think my student solution right here is actually easier to read, uh, if not otherwise just better. So here the uh, function header is exactly the same as it was before. So we're going to use that max function to get the maximum in each column and the row in which each of those maximums occurs. And then we'll use the max function again to find out in what column does the overall maximum occur. Great, that's half of our result right there. And then we just got to figure out the row index. Well, good news. We can just index back into that row vector at position column index to get the row where that largest value is found and put it into the row index return variable right there and get our result. So both of those work, uh, the student solution right there and my solution, which is probably a little bit overcomplicated. So I always love to see it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we want to write our own code and practice and see what we come up with. Writing code is a more creative endeavor than at least like your, your high school mathematics, I would say. Not like necessarily college or, or graduate mathematics, which can be very, very creative, but certainly like, you know, your algebra classes and even up through calculus, it can be um, a little bit samey. Basically, everybody's turning in the same results on their homeworks and such. But with programming, there really are a lot of different ways to express style and there's trade-offs between different ways of writing the code, whether it's more readable or more concise or more secure. There's all kinds of different interesting trade-offs there. So I always like to see different uh, solutions to different problems. And I'm just going to wrap up this video right there and uh, move on to the next one.